Did you know there are foods that can actually help you lose weight? I'm also going to share two crucial tips for weight loss that could completely change your life. I've noticed that most people trying to lose weight don't follow these tips, and that's often the reason why you might be struggling to shed those pounds. So, what are these foods? And is there such a thing as thermogenic food? I'm also going to talk a bit about metabolism with you folks. Many of you might not know this, but I'm an endocrinologist and metabolic specialist. I'm an expert in metabolism and the broader field of obesity and weight management. The doctor who specializes in this area is an endocrinologist. A lot of people aren't aware of this because there are many individuals, even doctors, who end up discussing weight loss without this specific expertise. All right, let's start with the list of 14 foods. But first, I'll share those two tips I mentioned. So, the first food on our list is zucchini. Zucchini is excellent for those trying to lose weight because it's low in calories, but that's not all. It's also rich in fiber, which helps with feeling full, improves digestion, controls blood sugar levels, and is incredibly versatile. You can even make zucchini noodles as a pasta alternative. Who's a fan? I love it, and it'll help you feel more satisfied while consuming fewer calories. We know that when it comes to metabolism, there's no single food that magically makes you lose weight. It's not as simple as just eating one type of food and everyone becoming thin. The truth is, we need to pay attention to several factors. One of these is choosing foods that are low in calories but high in volume, so you feel more satisfied. What about thermogenic foods? Do they really exist or not? Nope, not really. There's no such thing as a food that will speed up your metabolism. What does exist is exactly what I'm explaining to you now. Let's talk about nutritious foods that are low in calories but will keep you feeling full, helping you eat less and achieve a calorie deficit. And food number two on our list is cucumber. Cucumber is excellent, truly one of the best foods in the world. It's rich in potassium, which can help regulate your blood pressure. It also contains vitamin B6, vitamin C, and a compound called cucurbitacin. There are numerous scientific studies showing how cucurbitacin can improve your health. Well, cucumber is also high in fiber, which can aid digestion and increase feelings of fullness. The same principle I mentioned for zucchini applies to cucumber as well. Along with number two, I'm going to include pickles here. I know you're probably wondering, can we include pickles? Yes, absolutely. Just be mindful of the sodium content in pickles. You can even make them at home to control how much salt and sodium you're adding. If you prefer to buy them ready-made like I do, I'm not very skilled in the kitchen and don't enjoy making them myself, that's fine too. So when I'm shopping, I always check the sodium content. Many products even have low sodium written right on the label. When you're about to eat pickles, you can also drain that liquid they come in, the brine, because it's packed with sodium. So, avoid that brine. It'll help reduce your sodium and salt intake in your diet. So, cucumbers are an excellent food choice. Number three, sugar-free gelatin. Sugar-free gelatin is also a great option because it'll keep you feeling full. I'm a big fan of gelatin as a dessert, but many people tend to overindulge in desserts. This is another common mistake. You might be controlling your diet well, but then you suddenly crave something sweet. So you go and eat chocolate, for example which is very high in calories. Sugar-free gelatin, on the other hand, only has about five to 10 calories per serving. So it's excellent for those who are in the process of losing weight. I really like gelatin. How about you? Just to remind you, we're talking about zero calorie gelatin because the other gelatin formula with added sugar won't be good for your weight loss process. Anyone trying to lose weight should be careful with regular gelatin but zero calorie gelatin is widely available. Many supermarkets carry it so you can easily control your calorie intake. Now you might ask me, but what about this idea of thermogenic foods? Is that true? This term isn't used anymore because we now know that no food can really accelerate your metabolism or increase calorie burning. There are two things that are important for metabolism. Actually, several things, but these can increase your basal metabolic rate. The first is muscle mass. Muscle mass can increase your energy expenditure, including calorie burn when you're sleeping, which is your basal metabolic rate. So both muscle mass and certain hormones can boost your metabolism. It's important to evaluate various conditions, 
such as thyroid disease or hypothyroidism, because these can interfere with your metabolism. There are other hormones that can affect your metabolic rate, but I want to highlight the thyroid hormone in particular. And the fourth food on our list is tomatoes. I eat tomatoes every day. They're incredibly healthy because they're packed with antioxidants and vitamins, including lycopene. For the men watching this channel, lycopene has been extensively studied for its role in prostate protection. Tomatoes are also great for your eyes because they contain lutein and zeaxanthin, which help protect your vision. Tomatoes are also rich in vitamin C and vitamin K, and they aid in collagen production. Collagen is also a very popular topic these days. If you eat tomatoes, you can boost your collagen production. And the fifth food on our list is spinach. Spinach is packed with vitamins A and K, folic acid, and iron. Spinach can also help regulate your blood pressure by relaxing your blood vessels which is incredibly beneficial for your body. Spinach is also very versatile. You can add it to omelets and pies. I love eating spinach, and it's not because of Popeye. When I was a kid, cartoons really encouraged us to eat it. So I started eating spinach, and it eventually became a habit. Do you eat spinach? Are you feeling stronger? Spinach really is amazing. It's worth noting that to increase iron absorption from spinach, it's a good idea to pair it with a source of vitamin C. In my case, when I eat spinach, I also drink a freshly squeezed lemon beverage. So I add half a lemon, dilute it in water, and it turns out great. Not only is it tasty, but it also helps me absorb more iron and is rich in vitamin C thanks to the lemon. And number six on our list is watermelon. I want to highlight citrulline, which is found in watermelon and can significantly benefit your health, particularly in terms of blood pressure levels. Watermelon is incredibly hydrating, with water making up about 92% to 95% of its composition. Now you might be thinking, but I've heard watermelon is high in sugar. Sure, if you eat an entire watermelon, you'll definitely gain weight. But I'm talking about a single serving here, about 120 grams or a medium slice of watermelon. This kind of portion is actually beneficial for your health. There are even studies showing the benefits of eating a slice of watermelon for weight loss. That's because you get lots of vitamins, it increases your feeling of fullness, and it hydrates you at the same time. What's the glycemic index of watermelon? When you eat food, how much does it raise your blood sugar? Watermelon's glycemic index is 72, which is considered high. However, watermelon has few carbs per serving, only about 3 to 4 grams. So it's still worth eating watermelon. Why? It's delicious, tasty, and can satisfy your sweet tooth. Who doesn't crave sweets sometimes? I'll admit, even I sometimes crave sweets. And watermelon helps with that, you know? So watermelon is definitely a great food choice. Fruits are rich in antioxidants and are healthy. And food number seven is broccoli. Broccoli is a vegetable rich in iron, calcium, vitamin K, antioxidants, fiber, and low in calories. So for those trying to lose weight or maintain weight loss, this video is also relevant for that group of people, or even those who are careful not to gain weight. Broccoli is fantastic. It's one of the best foods in the world. And broccoli is such a versatile food, it can help control blood sugar levels. Broccoli is just excellent. Oh, but I've heard that broccoli can be bad for your thyroid. Is that true or is it just a myth? That's a complete myth. Broccoli doesn't harm your thyroid at all. Many people say this because there was a study done on rats that were fed only broccoli and other cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower. And these rats that were fed exclusively broccoli developed goiter and hormonal imbalances. What's goiter? It's when the thyroid gland enlarges and starts causing hormonal problems. But this didn't happen in humans, so it's really just a big misconception. First off, you're not going to eat only broccoli. You'd have to eat like seven or eight pounds of broccoli, which you're not going to do, so there's no need to worry. Another thing people say is that broccoli should be cooked or boiled in water and that you can't eat raw broccoli, which is also not true, okay? Raw broccoli doesn't harm your thyroid. This is a big myth. As an endocrinologist specializing in thyroid health, I'm here to reassure you about this. Since we've talked about obesity and thyroid, the other major area in endocrinology is diabetes. These are the three main areas. 
And number eight on our list is guava. Guava, besides being a source of vitamins, minerals and antioxidants, is also low in calories. For those looking to lose weight, it's a great fruit because it's not only nutritious but also low in calories and can really help in the weight loss process. Moreover, the few calories in guava come from low glycemic index carbohydrates and it's also rich in fiber with a low concentration of sugars and a low glycemic load. So it's one of the excellent foods for those watching their weight. If you have diabetes or high blood pressure, for example, guava can actually be beneficial for you. There are even studies linking guava consumption to improvements in lipid profiles and blood fats. Just look at all the health benefits guava has to offer. I'll be honest with you. I'm not the biggest fan of guava myself. I don't regularly eat guava. I probably have one every couple of weeks or so. I usually only end up having a piece when my son is eating it. And coming in at number nine on our list is strawberries. Strawberries are part of the berry family and contain anthocyanins. Anthocyanins have been extensively researched with numerous scientific studies demonstrating their health benefits. Besides vitamins and minerals, strawberries are low in calories and can aid in your weight loss journey. You'll feel fuller and more satisfied so you won't end up eating three or four trays of strawberries. A reasonable amount is enough to make you feel good and prevents overeating or consuming excess calories. So strawberries are excellent for those who are health conscious and trying to lose weight. Number 10 on our list is lettuce. There are various types of lettuce, but I'm talking about lettuce in general here because it's rich in vitamins A, C, and K. Lettuce offers other benefits for the immune system and also contains iron and calcium. Lettuce can help relax blood vessels. Lettuce is truly an excellent food. If you add lettuce and tomato, you're already creating a great combination. Plus, lettuce is very low in calories. Lettuce won't make you gain weight. On the contrary, because of its high fiber content, it'll actually help you lose weight. As you can see, fiber is crucial for weight loss because it helps you feel full. One of the key strategies for weight loss is to focus on foods that have more volume. This is because of the connection between your stomach and brain. When your stomach is full, your brain gets the signal that you don't need to eat anymore. You've probably noticed this yourself. So if you incorporate these foods into your diet, you'll be taking a big step towards your weight loss goals. Foods with high volume and low calories, like lettuce, zucchini, and tomatoes. The ones I'm mentioning here. Food number 11 is watercress. I've never talked about watercress here on the channel or in my videos, but you guys often ask me if watercress is beneficial. Yes, watercress has several health benefits, especially for the cardiovascular system. Watercress can help regulate blood pressure levels and is also low in calories. If you like watercress, feel free to include it in your diet. It's also low in calories, which can help with weight loss. Number 12 on our list is radish. Do you enjoy radish salad? I'm not a big fan, but for those who like it, here's a suggestion. Radish is one of the best foods for your health. It won't raise your blood sugar levels and it can aid in the weight loss process. It has a very low concentration of sugars and carbohydrates. So it's also good for people with diabetes, plus it's packed with vitamins and antioxidants. We're nearing the end of our list of 14 foods. There are still two extremely important tips to come. Before I move on to number 13, I'd like to ask you to like this video if you haven't already. If you're enjoying this content and finding it valuable, if you're picking up important information. So give this video a thumbs up as it helps others understand that the video is relevant and helps spread it to more people. And food number 13 is kiwi. Kiwi, besides being low in calories, can help you with two issues that I want to highlight. The first one is high blood pressure. Kiwi can regulate blood pressure levels, which has been extensively studied. But the other benefit, which also has scientific backing, is that kiwi can improve your sleep. Now that's some good news. There was a study that found people who ate kiwi before bed had better sleep quality and slept for longer. I eat kiwi five times a week. If I can't buy kiwi regularly, I make sure to buy and eat it before bed because it helps with the sleep process. This has other benefits as well. So kiwi has a double benefit here. Besides helping you with weight loss, it also helps even more with sleep. And as you know, sleep is crucial for weight control and losing weight. And I know there are many people thinking, ah, but this doctor eats all the foods he's talking about. 
except for radishes, which I've admitted to you here. How come he's not obese? Well, that's exactly why. Because these foods are high in volume but low in calories. So you can eat a bit more of the foods on this list without worrying too much about weight gain. And food number 14 is cauliflower, also from the cruciferous group, which is low in calories and very versatile too. You can roast it or cook it. There are many options. Cauliflower also contains quercetin, which is gaining popularity for its health benefits. And you've probably heard that cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower don't harm the thyroid, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, what are the two tips that can greatly improve your health? As an endocrinologist, I see people making a lot of mistakes in these two areas. Number one is about salad. Did you know that salad might actually be making you gain weight? If you add foods with high fat, high calorie dressings or use too much olive oil, these additions can be very rich in fats and calories. So you take a very healthy food, but by adding a dressing or a lot of cheese, you're making one of the common mistakes. Be careful with what you add to your salad because it can lead to excess calories. Even the famous and healthy olive oil can be a culprit. It's very healthy, but it's also very high in calories. What's the recommended daily dose of olive oil to get cardiovascular benefits such as reduced risk of heart attack, and even reduced risk of stroke. It's just seven milliliters per day. With this amount, you can get the benefits without the risk of consuming excess calories. So be mindful of what you put in your salad. I season my salad with apple cider vinegar, which is also very healthy, has several benefits to help in this process, and won't add excess calories. If you don't like apple cider vinegar, there's balsamic vinegar, which can also help with weight management and other types of vinegar are good options too. So season your salad with vinegar and avoid other dressings, cheese dressing for instance. Oh, I make a salad that's super healthy but I still can't seem to lose weight. Then when I dig deeper, I find out the person is adding cheese dressing, croutons, other sauces, and grated cheese to their salad. Well, that's going to make it really tough. Even if it seems very healthy, it ends up having too many calories and will prevent you from losing weight because while you're eating healthy foods from the list I mentioned, you're also adding a ton of extra calories. And tip number two, which is also crucial for anyone trying to lose weight, is to pay attention to how you prepare your food. Many people add oils, fats, and even lard when they're cooking certain dishes. Lard is not only high in saturated fats, which are unhealthy and can increase cardiovascular risk, but it's also extremely calorie dense. To help you understand this tip in practical terms and see why it's so important, if you fry an egg using fat, oil, or any of the other fats I've mentioned in this video, it'll have more calories than if you fry two eggs in a non-stick pan where you don't need to add any fat at all. Look at it this way. You'll be getting more protein and less fat, which will aid your weight loss efforts, and you'll actually be eating more food. You'll be eating two eggs instead of one. On the flip side, you'd be eating just one egg with extra fat. So if you're trying to lose weight, be careful about the fats you're adding to your diet. Whenever possible, cook and eat your food using a non-stick pan. I know there are lots of videos out there saying non-stick pans are bad for you, but if you, when you look for and buy a certified non-stick frying pan that meets quality standards, you're not only doing your health a favor, but you're also greatly aiding your weight loss journey. On a scale of 0 to 10, how would you rate this video? If it's a 10, I'll make more videos like this one. Also, let me know in the comments which part of the world you're watching this video from. What foods do you typically eat? I mentioned some in the video, so I'd love for you to share yours in the comments too. I always enjoy reading them. I'm speaking to you from Porto Alegre. Now I'd like to suggest another video for you to watch. It's a video where I talked about fatty liver disease. Did you know there are many foods that people with fatty liver should avoid? Foods that are harmful, and there are also beneficial foods that can help in managing this condition. I discuss all of this in that video. I'm sure you'll find it both interesting and useful. I hope so. Take care. See you next time.